Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. In this video, I am beginning the assembly of the Fresh F3 Res. And uh, I'm starting with the tail section. Uh, first thing I need to do is cut out uh, these various pieces here on this sheet. It's a nice, thick, high quality piece of balsa. And uh, as you can see with the CNC cutting uh, versus laser, you get a, a larger cut and uh, there's a, a larger piece of scrap that needs to be dealt with. I'm going to just pull this in for a close up for you. As you can see, compared to the thickness of the blade, it's a pretty big gap, uh, but that's fine. I recommend cutting a little like in the middle and then trimming by hand and then finishing off uh, sanding. Uh, another thing, uh, just some build tips. For example, this is just a, uh, a paint stirrer, standard paint stirring stick. They're, they're cheap as can be. It's a great way to uh, make yourself some, some sanding blocks that are nice and light, easy to hold and, and disposable. And uh, to make these, I'm just using uh, standard uh, sheets of sandpaper that I cut the size uh, that I need. And then I am using this 3M product. It's a uh, spray adhesive, a contact adhesive. So uh, basically I, I uh, mark a line for where the glue needs to be on the wood. And then I put the, uh, the piece of uh, sandpaper sandpaper side down next to it and I'll lay a piece of scrap paper across uh, the handle area that I don't want spray on and just hit a nice light coat on both of those surfaces let it dry for about 15 minutes and then you just uh, flip the sandpaper on top of here lining up the edge carefully and you have a nice quick easy bond and uh, one sanding stick and this will make uh, nice short work. It's it's 220. I went with something reasonably fine, but not so fine that it would take a ton of time to uh, remove whatever you know flash is left there and get a nice smooth surface on the edges. So that's a good way to go. Also, another building tip. I discussed in a previous video that this is a a new piece of foam here that I purchased. I bought a large sheet of this at Lowe's, and I. The standard size, I think, is four foot by eight foot, same as like plywood, which was far bigger than I needed for my work area. I was able to get uh, two pieces big enough to cover the majority of the work surface and, um, you know, big enough to, to build out these large wings on. And that also left me a good bit of scrap as well. And so uh, to do the, the cutting of these parts, I, I don't want to do it on the main build sheet because I want to keep this surface as uh, flat as possible. And uh, over time, you know, you'll lean on it, um, tools, things like that. You'll dent it up and, and deform the surface. And uh, that's not good for laying up wings and such. So to make this last as long as possible, I use chunks of the original piece like this, which is oh maybe a, a foot and a quarter by uh, a foot and a half two feet and just use this basically as a cutting board and that way I can you know gouge it up as much as you know I want I can lean on it and dent it and uh, do whatever and then throw it aside and cut another piece off of the uh, larger scrap that's left over um, so that's a, a good way to go and it's very inexpensive the um, the four foot uh, by eight foot sheet was about $13 uh, and change with tax. So that just gives you an idea. That gave two full work areas. That's you know enough to build at least three or four airplanes before they get damaged up to the point where uh, you wanna put a fresh one down and uh, probably get, oh, at least uh, four or five uh, cutting boards of this size right here that I've just uh, shown you. So very economical good way to go so I'm gonna start cutting these out and uh, pick up the video when I'm ready to start pinning pieces down and show you how everything is fitting up okay I have cut out the various pieces and so now it's time to clean stuff as you can see 
um, I went ahead and just pretty much cut through at the center I tried a couple of them just trying to get close and if you don't get it exact you start potentially gouging into the wood I think it's a lot easier to just do it like this See, it only takes a couple seconds longer than with a knife and you get it right flush where you want it so uh, that's how the way, how I'm going to do it. You can do it any way you wish. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach this one piece at a time. I'll start by cleaning the pieces for uh, the main uh, portion of the rudder. Uh, then I'll do the steerable piece and glue that together. And I'll just, you know, do one, glue it, slide it aside, and, you know, move forward that way. So, in fact, I may just start here at the... Uh, uh, movable portion of the stabilizer uh, that way I'm working from the edge of the table inwards so I can just slide stuff a little out of the way and then I can focus in on that one piece pin that down get that glued together and slide it off everything uh, just as with the Foker kit uh, the CNC process seems to do very nice, just like the laser cutting, um, if it's designed properly, which it certainly seems to be. Everything keys in and fits very, very snugly, so this should be a snap to just um, use a little bit of uh, thin CA along the seam here, and that's going to be glued and just move forward. Um, everything I've read about this particular kit, people say that it uh, it builds really easily, even the wings. Uh, someone made a comment that uh, you could build this sitting on a couch in your lap. I don't, uh, I don't even want to attempt that, but it does uh, bode well for the kit, you know, being uh, easily put together. So... Um, you know, hopefully it's uh, close to that. In any event, um, I'm going to go ahead and polish these pieces up here, get them uh, cleaned, and start gluing. And I will let you know as I go and show you the pieces as I complete them. So the first surface is ready to glue. I didn't necessarily need to pin everything down, and I didn't pin down these uh, small connecting struts here. I just did the uh, the main pieces and the end pieces, and um, you know since I'm using uh, fast thin CA, I can just you know hold pieces down with my fingers like that and hit the seam with the CA and then move on you know piece by piece. Uh, this should go together quite quickly. Uh, everything cleaned up very nicely. I definitely prefer the sandpaper uh, for the the pieces that had large chunks like this I went ahead and used a knife to just get it down to size a bit and then finish the process with the sandpaper uh, but that seems to give the best overall result I think and least chance of uh, making it in a regular shape by cutting into the wood more than you would want to with a knife so the tail feathers are done it was uh, quite easy I spent uh, a bit of extra time shaping uh, thinning down the uh, the rear edge and uh, rounding that out I'm trying to get a little weight off of it um, oops uh, beveling the rear edge here I also uh, uh, thinned out the front edge uh, quite nicely I got a nice bit of an airfoil symmetrical airfoil shape going there and uh, did a about a 45 here and back here um, I'm planning to do a monocoat hinge. I'm also not going to be using the um, the springs with the uh, the pull cords. I'm going to use very thin carbon fiber push rods. So let's uh, let's see how much these weigh. Okay, so 8.58 grams for the stabilizer ready to cover and the rudder I did the same kind of shaping I thinned out the leading edge quite nicely I did a double 45 um, on the rear and uh, likewise here as well again a monocoat hinge is what I'm going to do here 
and I thinned out the uh, the rear of this uh, even onto the um, the crossbars a little bit uh, again trying to a make a nice airfoil shape and B to reduce some weight so let's see what these weigh and those come in at 6.16 grams so let's just throw them both on just for kicks okay 14.73 grams for the rear tail feathers uh, shaped and ready for covering so now it's time to move on to the fuselage I'm working in the order uh, of construction that is in an English manual that I was able to find I'll uh, definitely be putting a link to that it does not come in the kit I think it was on the website uh, where I bought it uh, also I found a couple of build logs and have looked over them and there's definitely some inf interesting information to be had there as well uh, anything that's uh, really pertinent I'll, I'll try to include in the videos um, but I am going to be building this my way so uh, if you are interested you can go to RC groups and search those up all of the instructions that come with this are on the single sheet of plans and everything is in German uh, so that is a little bit of a problem uh, but like I said that one manual list I was able to find is a PDF and it is in English I do not remember if it was in German and I did a, uh, a translation on that not that I personally translated it I believe I talked about this in another video it pertained to another kit <clears throat> what you can do is if you have a, let's say a manual that is in German a PDF you can copy that or do a save as from uh, Adobe and uh, you have to at least have reader um, so you want to be using the uh, uh, the program itself not like opening it up in a browser and save it as HTML and that'll create a folder with subfolders for the images and a full HTML version of that manual then you point your browser to the main file opening that HTML file with all of its in images and it opens as a web page do that in Chrome and then you can let Chrome <clears throat> excuse me I'm sorry I'm I am fighting uh, what my doctor believes now is covoid and uh, <clears throat> my voice isn't going really great in any event uh, you save the, you let it translate uh, German to English in, in the browser page that HTML file and then save as a PDF so you're taking a PDF converting it to HTML so that you can run a translation on it in Google's Chrome browser and then saving it back into PDF format and then you have a nice PDF document that is a fairly decent translation I mean there are always going to be things that don't translate uh, exactly or, or perfectly but it gives you something you know much better than trying to uh, you know hunt your way through through German if you have no experience you know no German language experience <clears throat> excuse me <coughs> in any event I'm gonna keep proceeding on this as much as I can one day at a time and uh, hopefully they're gonna get me fixed up uh, quickly and I won't have uh, any large interruption in the content that I'm providing for you um, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos I, I try to pack as many build tips as I can for those of you that are not experienced uh, balsa uh, airplane builders and don't have that background uh, so that you become familiar with the tools and the techniques so you can do stuff like this yourself um, uh, this was very simple um, aside from the way I did the uh, the cutting of them out and um, using the sanding stick uh, I use the sanding stick for a lot of the shaping um, also to uh, to get the 45 degree angles um, I used uh, this this is a razor plane and uh, basically it's just a, a type of uh, straight edge razor it's not a shaving razor it's a specific type of blade um, that you can get and it goes with the uh, you know it comes as a kit usually you get 
uh, at least one or two spare blades and if you do buy one I recommend getting several blades because this is the kind of thing that will go out of production for a short period of time and then someone else will pick it up and they'll make changes to it and you might have a different blade or things like that I've got uh, an, one old razor plane that um, I cannot get blades for anymore uh, in any event this is a really really handy item let me just pull up a piece of scrap here I'll give you a quick demo Camera down here. Get you close in. So, you want to get a 45 degree angle on here. You just hold this at 45 degrees. that gets you most of the way and then you can use your sandy block I would have gone a little further if I were actually gonna you know, do this as a finish I'm just trying to do a demo for you but you can see how much material that removed and uh, you know how quickly it does it and um, you know especially if you're working with a large piece of aileron you know something that's you know a foot and a half to two feet long of, of uh, balsa aileron or you're shaping um, a, uh, a leading edge um, that has starts as a like a square block of wood on the end of a uh, like a foam core or something like that and you need to turn that that you know uh, rectangular shaped piece of balsa stick into a, a rounded edge it's a lot of material to remove and um, you can do it you know you can get a lot of the material off with a uh, just a standard blade and carving but you can get yourself in trouble because the blade can catch the grain and, and dive in too far and uh, and then you're screwed and um, this works you know quite quickly you can adjust how deep the blade is going to be so it uh, you can control how much material it's going to take off with each each pass and um, they're extremely handy item to have and they're not very expensive so I uh, definitely recommend putting one into your kit <clears throat> excuse me so uh, that pretty much covers it for this video uh, the next video I'm going to be starting into the fuselage well thanks for watching I, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, please click like please uh, subscribe if you have not already and for those of you who are subscribers thank you again I really appreciate it um, I've gotten a lot of new sub subscribers during this COVID outbreak and it, it is greatly appreciated I'm uh, glad to see that um, you know also it is the spring season I was hoping that I would uh, uh, you know get a lot of new subscribers during this time of the year and um, it is certainly happening that way and I truly appreciate it thank you all very much